Greetings. Hi there. I'm Dr. Walter Jacobson. I'm a board-certified psychiatrist and the uh, author of the book, Forgive to Win and Self-Sabotage, Create the Life You Want. This is a live call-in show, uh, so please feel free to call in and ask any questions that you might have about the forgiveness process, about relationships, about anything, actually. Uh, my forte is cognitive tools and spiritual techniques to help people maximize their lives and to help people have physical well-being, emotional well-being, and actually material well-being. That's to a large degree what forgiveness is all about. A lot of people think forgiveness has to do with the other person. Uh, and uh, actually forgiveness has to do with you, with you taking care of yourself, with you freeing yourself from the emotional prison that resentments, anger, hostilities, grievances, and, uh, and aggression and unforgiveness puts you in. Uh, when we are unforgiving, uh, we are really only attacking ourselves. Okay? Most people are reluctant to forgive because they feel that if they forgive that they're somehow uh, expressing weakness or maybe they're letting the other person off the hook or maybe in some way they're sending the message that they're condoning what the other person did or, or the person shouldn't be held responsible, there shouldn't be consequences of their actions or, or maybe they're opening themselves up to be uh, victimized once again. None of those things are true. You can forgive somebody uh, and still want them to uh, you know, have consequences of their actions. Uh, there can still be punishments involved, but you free yourself emotionally of all the baggage that you carry. Oftentimes we don't forgive because they hurt us. We want to hurt them back. We feel they deserve to be punished. And so our, our anger, our wrath, our unforgiveness is a form of punishment to make them feel guilty, to make them feel shamed, to make them feel bad. But usually, usually the irony of it is that uh, these people aren't losing any sleep over you being unforgiving. Uh, you're the one losing sleep. You're the one with the dark cloud uh, floating around your head uh, just being annoyed and angry and stuck in the past and stuck in your own victimhood. It's just a huge mistake. The bottom line is when you have trouble forgiving others, you got to remember it's not weakness, it's strength. Uh, you got to remember you're forgiving others for your own peace of mind. You're not forgiving them to let them out of some emotional prison. You're forgiving them to let yourself out of an emotional prison. Okay, because when you forgive, you release uh, so much of your resentments, your bitterness, your grievances, uh, all this negative uh, chatter in your head which on some level, you know, it, you know uh, attracts negativity or keeps you stuck. Look, uh, the whole premise, and let me backpedal a little bit, the whole premise of the book Forgive to Win, the whole idea is that we sabotage ourselves in a variety of ways. We procrastinate. We don't follow through. We don't do things that we know are in our best interests. We do things that are very toxic. We hang out with toxic people, places, and circumstances. And... Uh, and, uh, and all of this self-sabotaging behavior, why? Why is it? Why, if you would like yourself, why would you do things to attack yourself? You wouldn't. So it must mean that on some level, you don't like yourself. On some deeply embedded level, you're filled with guilt, shame, and self-loathing. And, so, uh, and so on some level, you're unforgiving of yourself. Uh, so that's the whole key to this. Uh, how, how do you change? How do you get rid of the self-sabotaging behavior? You got to learn to love yourself and forgive yourself. And how do you do that? By loving and forgiving others. Uh, when you uh, engage in esteemable acts of kindness towards others, when you forgive others, when you let go of your judgment and attack thoughts, what you're really doing is you're forgiving and accepting yourself. You're loving yourself. Because what we're really doing in the first place, when we project all of our judgments onto other people, it's, it's just a projection. It's a defense mechanism to take all the crap we feel at a deep unconscious level about ourselves and toss it out onto other people and see it in other people. So when we forgive and accept and love and help others, we're really healing our projections. We're healing all the garbage that we feel about ourselves deeply embedded in our unconscious mind. So when you have trouble forgiving others because you, for some reason you, you don't want to let them off the hook or they hurt you too much, remember, you're forgiving them to heal yourself. You're forgiving them to love yourself. You're forgiving them to release yourself of all your own self-sabotage behaviors. Because it's true. The more you do this stuff, esteemable acts of kindness, forgiveness, acceptance, and love, the more you put this out there into the universe, the more you're sending a message to your subconscious mind that you are good enough and worthy and deserving of success and not failure and, uh, and prosperity and, bun and abundance, not punishment. And uh, the subconscious mind works now with your conscious desire for happiness, prosperity, success, etc., 
rather than subverting you with uh, by helping you to procrastinate and resist and get in your own way. So that's the key thing. When you uh, have trouble forgiving, remember you're doing it for yourself and not for others. It's, it's ironically, when you forgive others, it's a very selfless thing to do, but it's also the most selfish thing to do because in the long run, you will reap the rewards of forgiving others. You will reap the rewards of being generous and compassionate and kind and accepting towards others. Okay, so forgiving others is pretty important. And uh, and when you have trouble, remember that anger hurts, forgiveness heals. This is one of my mantras. This is in the book. This is a key thing. Rem- anger isn't, you know, healing anger isn't just uh, an emotional victory or, or a spiritual victory. Uh, healing anger is also a physical victory, okay? Because what does anger do? Okay, the mind-body uh, connection is real. Uh, incredibly real. When you're angry, in general, your blood pressure goes up. Your heart rate goes up. Anger is stress. Anger gets the cortisol response going. Anger, stress, actually depresses the immune system. So you're more likely to get sick and you're less likely to be able to recover and heal and repair yourself when you are sick or injured. Anger hurts you. I mean, uh, the, the classic case is the type A personality who, uh, you know, it's not just a workaholic. Type A people uh, have a lot of rage, a lot of anger, you know, and uh, and they also have a lot of hospital admissions for, for cardiac events. A lot of people with type A anger uh, behaviors and personalities end up having uh, heart attacks and strokes. Anger is bad news physically. So what you want to do is you want to get rid of anger. Anger is just a signal device, okay? It's, you know, it tells you something's wrong. It tells you you've been attacked or threatened. It tells you do something. It, uh, anger tells you fight or flight, do something. But once you've done that, when, once you've realized, okay, I got to get out of the way of, uh, of being attacked or I've got to fight back or what, whatever you decide you need to do, after that, the anger is now a wasted emotion. Now it's serving no uh, uh, good purpose. Now you're just using your anger to ultimately attack yourself and continue to victimize yourself long after having been victimized. All right. So uh, the key when you have trouble forgiving others and you find yourself filled with anger uh, and resentment, you know, and bitterness and grievance and ruminating all this all over all the past transgressions of others. Remember, anger hurts you. Forgiveness heals you. Okay, so. Other tips for when we're having trouble forgiving others. Uh, the main one of the main ones, and I keep reiterating this in uh, in pretty much all of my shows because this is a key concept that's very difficult to get, particularly in the midst of uh, an argument, a fight, a, a bitterness between uh, people. But basically. If you can see any situation, any person who's transgressing, who's angry, who's yelling at you, abusing you, if you can recognize that everything uh, that people do is either uh, an expression of love or it's a call for love. If you can try to understand that, even when someone's yelling at you, particularly a loved one yelling at you, that actually it's a call for love. They, it feels like an attack. Yes, it, it, it seems very much like an attack. Yes, yeah. Right. But deep down, what is it really? It's just somebody who's insecure, threatened, scared, fear of abandonment, uh, fear of being unloved, fear of being rejected, and doesn't know how to ask for reassurance and help and love in a healthy, uh, appropriate way. So they ask for love. They ask for attention. uh, They ask for connection by yelling. And, and I, you know, and calling names, and ironically, they end up pushing people away—the very people they want to draw close to them. So, in the midst of an argument with a loved one, when they're yelling at you, or blaming you, or accusing you, and it's very—they they appear very ugly, and they're attacking, and nasty, and scary. If you can somehow uh, put a time out in your mind and step aside and rise above the battlefield and look at them and realize, okay, right, this is somebody who loves me. But they're in a lot of pain, and they and they and this is a call for love. And if I cannot engage in battle and not get defensive and angry and attack back and 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 go into the whole dueling battle game, if I can just rise above all this and step aside and go, okay, right, uh, I, you're hurting. I get that. You're scared. I get that. You need reassurance. I get that. Let me reassure you. 
that I, you know, uh, that I love you. I care. I'm sorry that you have perceived that what I did was this or that. I didn't mean to do it. Uh, you were misunderstanding. This is how I really feel. Whatever it is, uh, you, you you try to validate their feelings, uh, you know, and then uh, you don't need to condone bad behavior. You still say, you know, what you're doing uh, is not appropriate. You're yelling. You're abusive. This is wrong. However, I love you. I want to get past this. I want you to get past this. Let's try to find a way to get past this. This is difficult stuff, but like anything, the more you practice compassion, acceptance, forgiveness, rising above the battlefield, you know, trying to see everything as love or a call for love, it works. Over time, you get better at it. Over the time, you stop going immediately into that knee-jerk reaction of when you're attacked, you attack back. Or, you know, it's incredible. It really does work. And it can be incredibly disarming, too. In the midst of an emotional, you know, battle, a fight with somebody, if you can step aside and truly be free of the judgment and the anger and the attack and and just fill your mind and heart with compassion, you can transform the other person. You can bring them and elevate them up to your level of vibration. It's true. It can be done. And I encourage you to practice it. I encourage you to experiment with this in the midst of of any kind of battle. I'm sure many of you in relationships keep going through the same thing over and over again with your loved one, with your partner, where you fight a lot and there's a lot of resentments and grievances and neither one wants to capitulate. Neither one wants to appear weak, you know, ironically by being loving. (laughs) So take the high ground be loving and watch your world transform. Okay, what else do you do when you have trouble forgiving others? Gratitude. Okay, when you have trouble forgiving others for what uh, they've done to you, have gratitude. Count your blessings. Look at all the good that you have in your life despite the bad, despite what has happened to you, despite what's been done to you, despite how you've been victimized, despite any limitation or loss. If you can find a way to see the blessings in your life, to be grateful for the things in your life despite how you've been trashed, it makes it easier to forgive. Okay, uh, feel free to call in any time if you have any question about any of this stuff that I'm bringing up or any issue about relationships. I'm here to, uh, to get a conversation going. Okay, uh, when you have trouble forgiving others, keep in mind that, uh, you know, but for the grace of God go I, you know, uh, under really stressful, difficult circumstances, People can do bad things. People can behave in bad, ugly, uh, disturbed ways. And if, uh, you know, again, it isn't condoning what they've done. But if we can recognize that people are up against the wall, for example, uh, you know, a simplistic example, the guy's been out of work for two years because of the economy and perhaps because of ageism. He can't get a job and he's out of work and he's and he's got kids to feed or, or still put through college. And uh, and and and, you know, and his wife's working and they're just not making ends meet. And he, you know, decides to do something like steal uh, from somebody or, you know, you know, is he a horrible human being? Uh, did he do something wrong? Yes. But can we find a way to understand the pressure that he was under that made him do that? Can we find a way to forgive despite the fact that he did something that was uh, illegal or immoral? So, so that's the key. You try to see, you try to put yourself in the other person's shoes and see what, what, uh, try to have some empathy and see what they might be going through and uh, in their lives and, and to try to have some, some, a greater sense of compassion and understanding so that you can appreciate, well, yeah, maybe under really terrible circumstances, I, you know, maybe I might have done something like that too. And also something to remember when you're unforgiving is that, you know, a lot of times in your past, you've probably done things that have been inconsiderate and unloving and selfish and cruel you know, and uh, and maybe not necessarily all that uh, moral or ethical or legal, and and uh, and you've wanted other people to forgive you, and you've been grateful that other people have forgiven you and and given you a second chance. So we've got to use that as a way to give other people a second chance. See see that. Another thing is to consider what people, how people were raised. You know, uh, what, you know what their experiences were. Many people uh, are raised by very dysfunctional parents. Don't know how to be parents. They're shamed. Uh, they're taught guilt. They're they are you know have very poor role models. They you know they are abandoned or neglected or abused in some way. And so they never really understand or learn what love is. 
They never understand what compassion is. They, they, they never understand what it is what it is to be generous and selfless and get out of your ego and care and share. Uh, they, they have no concept. And so, uh, yeah, they're going to grow up and they're going to do some nasty things. Oftentimes, it's repetition compulsion. They've been abused and they abuse. Now, again, is what they've done right? No. But can we perhaps uh, humanize them somewhat rather than demonize them by understanding their past and their roots and how they may have become that way? And they're not necessarily evil people because of having done evil things. And that's part of what you try to do when you have trouble forgiving others is, you know, you try to recognize that everybody is a part of God, even when they do ungodly things. Everybody is a part of God. And, uh, and if that can help you to find a way to forgive, then take it. Go for it. Because remember, again, you've got to find any means necessary to forgive. you got any way you can rationalize forgiveness to get yourself over that hump of unforgiveness. you got to do. Why? Back to the beginning. For your own peace of mind. To free yourself from, from an emotional prison. To free yourself of your own self-sabotaging behaviors. Right? To learn how to love and forgive yourself by loving and forgiving others. Okay. Um... It's easier to forgive if we can find some blessing in disguise, okay? Now, yeah, uh, so if after we've been abused or hurt or attacked or victimized in some way, if there's some aspect uh, led to us learning something more or growing uh, in some way emotionally or spiritually or giving us greater insight into life or or propelling us to to be more motivated and inspired to do great works in the world you know if you can see some kind of blessing in disguise or some, some something positive that came of something negative that makes it easier to forgive so look for that you know uh, a, a good example is the um, mothers against a drunk driving uh, woman right her son was killed by a drunk driver and uh you know she channeled all of that uh what i presume would have been tremendous rage and sadness and anger you know whatever she she you know she decided to create a movement to raise the consciousness of the planet and she started mothers against drunk drivers which probably has saved many other lives and helped many other people and so most likely through the process of doing something good for humanity it makes it has helped her and made it easier for her to forgive and certainly easier for others uh, in similar situations to forgive as well okay um, all right so Yeah, so it's you need to find ways to forgive even when uh, your mind uh, or your heart tell you otherwise. So how do you, uh, you know, what else can you do? What other tips are you? Well, for one thing, it would be good if you followed my forgiveness diet, okay? Now, this is in the book Forgive to Win, and uh, but basically the whole point is, we are so accustomed to being stuck in our ego, stuck in our attack thoughts, stuck in our resentments, stuck in our judgments, stuck in our unforgiveness. We're programmed since day one, perhaps from past lifetimes. Who knows? We got so much aggression and anger and judgment in us that to think that, you know, all of a sudden you listen to some guy on a radio show and, uh, and now you're gonna, it's going to be a snap to forgive. No. It doesn't work that way. Like anything, like any bad habit that you have, uh, in order to break the habit, you need to reinforce the positive behaviors over and over and over again. You've got to keep them in the forefront of your mind over and over and over again. Now, the whole thing about emotions and behaviors is we've got thoughts, conscious and unconscious thoughts lead to emotions. And those emotions lead to our behaviors. And so we really are stuck in uh, thought, emotion, behavior, bad habits. Okay, I, I, I would say to you that unforgiveness is a bad thought, emotion, behavior, habit. It's a bad habit. It's a bad habit that needs to be broken. Well, how do you break it? You break it by repetition. You break it by changing your thoughts, 
from anger and aggression to love, compassion, acceptance, and forgiveness. You change, you know. And so when you change your thoughts, you'll change your emotions from negative and withholding and angry and depressed and anxious. You'll change your emotions to more positive emotions of inner peace and joy and happiness and contentment, uh, etc., and, uh, and that'll change your behaviors. And then your behaviors will be uh, more loving and more compassionate and more accepting and more forgiving and more synergistic with others. And, and, uh, and your life gets better. So repetition is the key. Okay? And the forgiveness diet really is a way to develop a, a daily regimen of thoughts, actions, uh, and, and behaviors uh, so that you change these habits so it becomes routine. You got to keep it in the forefront of your mind. Okay, so forgiveness diet uh, is all about every day, uh, steamable acts of kindness unconditionally and, uh, with, uh, you know, and w- without needing anything in return and, uh, you know, and without exception. And so you go out there and you help others and, and that's the, and the steamable uh, acts of kindness is the protein of the forgiveness diet, as is forgiveness, the proteins, the building blocks. This is what you try to do every day to everyone unconditionally conditionally without exception the best that you can you try to have a lot of spiritual protein you try to have a limited amount of spiritual fat the judgments the attack thoughts the negative the negative energy the ne- the negativity you try to have uh, uh, cut down on your spiritual sugar which involves ridicule sarcasm uh, demeaning other people ma- ma- practical jokes making jokes at other people's expense gossiping about other people you want to get rid of all all of that. Uh, you want to have uh, spiritual water, mantras to tell yourself, to remind yourself throughout the entire day. Okay, well, anger hurts, forgiveness heals. Uh, throughout the day, put post-it notes on your computer, on your refrigerator, on your bathroom mirror, you know, on your car console. Really, you, you, on your phone, reminders on your iPhone. Or your smartphone to, to, to go off every hour to remind yourself that anger hurts, forgiveness heals. That everything is love or a call for love. That I could see peace instead of this. See, the more we do this, the more we remind ourselves and keep these in the forefront of our mind, then when some situation happens where we're going to go to the automatic default mode of withholding forgiveness or hanging on to judgment and attack thoughts, There'll be that, you know, the repetition and the, the patterning and the programming of these positive messages will pop into our heads suddenly. Oh, wait a second. Right. Anger hurts, forgiveness heals. Oh, yeah, that's right. I can do that instead. Oh, uh, right. The, the, uh, my girlfriend's yelling at me and calling me names. But the, wait, everything is love or a call for love. So, oh, that's right. I remember now. So uh, I can turn the other cheek and uh, find a way to validate her and soothe her and reassure her. And we can get past this in a, in a more positive way than in the past. So that's what it's all about. Mantras, spiritual water, every every hour, every two hours, remind yourself of the truths uh, about forgiveness, acceptance, and love, and the benefits to you. Um, you know, another thing is mindfulness, uh, what I call mindfulness calisthenics. Uh, when you get up in the morning, you know, you want to get the energy going. So do something. Do some jumping jacks. Uh, run, run around the room. Uh, do some aerobics, uh, do some push-ups or, or crunches or sit-ups, whatever. And while you're doing it, remind yourself of, of, of positive affirmations, of mindfulness affirmations, uh, of, of the things you want to do when you go out into the day, uh, you know, how you want to be. Remind yourself that uh, I feel, uh, you know, that every day and, and in every way it makes it easier for me, it's, it's easier for me to, uh, to be loving and forgiving and accepting. Every day and in every way it's easier for me to uh, let go of my judgment and attack thoughts uh, every day and in every way it becomes easier for me to uh, do esteemable acts of kindness towards others random acts of kindness towards others without being asked without wanting anything in return we remind ourselves now another thing to do is what I call the forgiveness inventory and this is something you do at night okay so you know just like uh, you do an inventory of your calories throughout the day or how much or how much did I eat on a regular diet oh I ate this many calories and I got this you know at night, before you go to sleep, you do a forgiveness inventory. You look back on the day's events and you ask yourself, well, okay, so what did I do? What did I do that was loving and kind and generous? Great, let me keep on doing that. What, what did I do that was unloving? What did I do that was inconsiderate? What, what did I do? Was I ridiculing? Was I sarcastic? Or was I gossiping? Was I mean-spirited? Were there people I could have helped and didn't? Were there people I could have forgiven and didn't? You make a, a list. These are the things I got to change the next day. I got to get better at the next day. And then in the morning, 
you know, when you're doing your mindfulness calisthenics for a few minutes, that's all it takes. Then you also remind yourself before you go out the door, you, you review the uh, the inventory. You review all the things that uh, that you said you uh, you know that you, you wanted to do better that you looked at the night before, and you remind yourself, oh yeah. And perhaps there are some people you need to make amends to, some people you did harm, and maybe you should remind yourself, that, hey, I better say to so and so that, hey, I'm sorry I did that. That was thoughtless or inconsiderate or unloving. Sorry about that. Uh, I'll try to do better. Uh, I appreciate you. I care about you. That was uh, inconsiderate and thoughtless. You, you try to make amends wherever you can, but you try to uh, not make the same mistakes you made that day. So you do you, a forgiveness inventory at night. You, for, you review your forgiveness inventory list in the, in the morning. Now, what else you can do is uh, at night before you go to sleep, when you've done your forgiveness inventory, do forgiveness affirmations. Again, remind yourself, uh, affirm, get program your subconscious mind before you go to sleep every day and in every way. It's easier for me to forgive and love others and accept others. Every day and in every way, it's easier for me to, to uh, be generous and kind and compassionate, to get out of myself, to be of service to others, right? Do some forgiveness visualizations. Uh, five minutes. You know, uh, while you're calm and relaxed, if there's somebody you're having trouble forgiving, you know, a very simple exercise, get calm, get relaxed. Uh, Imagine, uh, you know, imagine the person that you're having trouble forgiving uh, and they got mud and dirt and grime all over their face. And that's that that represents your perception of their ugliness or their cruelty or their meanness or their dirtiness. Right. And then sort of uh, 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 visualize a, a, a. you know, a hose or or washing their face or spraying their face with this spiritual hose, the spiritual water, and watch all the, the dirt and the grime and the ugliness go away until, until underneath you see the face of somebody who is, you know, the innocent and pure and loving. Again, if you can ch- do that shift, you're telling yourself uh, on an unconscious, subconscious level, you're giving yourself permission to forgive. Before you go to sleep, ask yourself for forgiveness dreams. You know, our subconscious mind is always working on solutions, always working through the stuff of our lives. So if you program your dreams before you go to sleep, you ask your, your, your subconscious mind, you ask your dreams to resolve your anger and aggression, to help you to forgive others that you're having, having trouble forgiving, to help you to overlook their flaws and their pettiness, etc., and, and to help you release your own, uh, your own resentments and bitterness. The subconscious mind will do your bidding. It will help you. You, The more you try to program your subconscious mind, the more it will work for you. Um, right. Uh, what else can you do? Well, there's, there's lucid dreaming as well. You know, that's where you actually, you know, wake up in your dream. You're dreaming, but you become aware that you're in the dreamscape. You become aware that there's some inconsistency in the dream, like you're talking to your eighth grade biology teacher who died... T- 12 years ago and so you know that person can't really be alive so if you're talking to them you must be dreaming and sometimes that sort of awareness of the incongruity of a dream uh, can help you to sort of wake up in the dream without actually waking up in real life and suddenly you're in the dreamscape now if this happens and you have a lucid dream and you wake up in the dreamscape then what you can do is whatever thought you have will happen in your dream so if you if you just sort of tell yourself, okay, I'm going to go to so and so who is really pissing me off, who I'm having a hard time, who I'm having a hard time unforgiving, I'm having a hard time forgiving them, then you 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 tell yourself in your lucid dream state, let me go to so and so and let me patch it up in the dream world, and see, when you patch things up and overcome obstacles and struggles in the dream world, oftentimes you end up overcoming obstacles and struggles in the real world because you're really reconciling the the conflicts in your mind okay we're uh, I'm, I'm wrapping up the show of forgive to win and self-sabotage create the life you want it's now available uh you know it's it's at amazon it's in paperback it's in kindle it's in uh you know and it's in an audio audio book as well by the way i have another book called einstein's cosmic journey uh in paperback and it's also for the next several days it's the next several days, it's actually free download on Kindle. If you go to Amazon, you go to you know, in Einstein's Cosmic Journey. It's a free Kindle download for the next several days. Uh, it's a cool story. Check it out. Okay, take care. Peace be with you.